Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I understand that you've been listening to some music uh, while you've been waiting, and that was composed by National PTA Reflections National Award of Excellence winners this year. And in a few minutes, you're going to hear music composed by the Reflections Outstanding Interpretation winner, Polly Moser. So get ready for that. Um, I'm Jackie Zimmerman, director of the Student Art Exhibit Program here at the department, which is now in its 10th year. Um, please honor my co-director, Doug. Where are you? Doug Herbert. Please, Doug. So you can talk with him after, and our very proactive apprentice who you've probably met today, Sharice Ross, she's out there taking care of a bunch of things. Uh, together we, we do this every a couple of months. We started the exhibit program with two goals in mind 10 years ago. One, to honor the creative work of students and their teachers as an effective way to learn and gain knowledge and to create and pass on knowledge to others. And second, uh, to provide our employees with both a beautiful environment, as you've seen today, and a way to be closely in touch with the department's mission and its customers, you, the students and teachers here today. Uh, we have grown from one exhibit a year with 18 pieces of 2D works to seven exhibits a year of 2D and 3D visual works, including photography, um, film and animation, writing, music composition, and dance choreography. Um, to celebrate the performing arts, we feature live performance at every opening, as you'll hear, see today. Perhaps the highest compliment we have had is from our head of innovation and improvement, Jim Shelton, who said, the student art exhibit program is one of the bright spots in the entire department. It is transformative. And that's what we hope always, that uh, when, as people pass through during the day, they use, they, they, they take in the works as a way to improve their work when they go back to their desks and transform the results that we're able to produce for the country. Today we welcome for the seventh time, I think, in our 10 years, the National PTA, whose Reflections program covers so many art forms and gives us all today 70 works to wow us, all on a theme that is central to our mission here at the department of ensuring an excellent education for all students in our country. That, di that theme is diversity means. Please applaud the two people who led a team from the National PTA to ensure the creation of what you are experiencing here today. Ethan Clark and Mary Pat King. You know, Ethan. They've been, um, in, they've been incredible partners in this whole process. Uh, we probably got together almost a year ago, and of course you think, oh, a year, we have a long time. Mm, no, <laughs> lots of details. So without them, this wouldn't happen today either. Um, in this audience today are people from many major arts and education organizations and PTAs from around the country. I won't name them, the list is very long, but please be aware of their presence and use the reception after this opening as an opportunity to meet members of your tribe, the artists and friends of the arts tribe, okay? It's important that you use this as an opportunity to talk with each other and learn from each other about what you're doing in your faraway places from each other. So diversity means, how is this for the meaning of diversity? Prepare the children of today for a world that has yet to be created, for jobs yet to be invented, and for technologies yet undreamed. This is a mission statement from the former superintendent of the Cleveland Heights School District and of the state of Ohio, with 1.8 million students and 600 plus school districts, and now our assistant secretary of elementary and secondary education. She is steeped in the realities of what counts as a solid education foundation. Science, math, language arts, history, and fine arts. 
and she's tuned in to what employers say they need in a workplace to succeed. Uh, expertise in communication, collaboration, problem solving, decision making, divergent thinking, creativity, and innovation. All of you artists and educators here today, including you, the parents, she is in touch with your value and your values. She is Deb Delisle. Please welcome her. Wow, thank you so much for that great introduction. I think you might have been talking to my mom. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to Washington, D.C. Um, welcome to the Department of Education. How many of you, for how many of you is this your first time in Washington, D.C.? Great, I love to see all of you coming, especially um, younger people, and hopefully this will be a great city for you to return to. It's a wonderful day. Um, the sun is shining outside, but I have to tell you, as I was walking and watching all of the, uh, looking at all of the wonderful artwork in the hallway out here, I decided that really the sun is shining inside today because the creativity, the talent, and the wisdom of all of our students whose works are out here is filling our building not just with warmth, but also with hope. I want to thank the PTA. Um, for their support of the arts in all of its forms, and especially your support of students in, in celebrating their absolutely incredible, amazing work as evidenced by this collection and by the competition that you run across this country. So thank you so very much. You know, I happen to be a big believer that what we offer to our children tells them, tells them what it is that we value. And when we offer the arts to our children, it tells them that we value their creativity and their innovation. It tells, them, it tells them that we value their insights. And most especially, it tells them that we value a different way of expressing ourselves through art. As a mom, I just happen to have one son. And as a mom, I've watched him progress through the arts. He's an extremely creative kid. Some parents can relate to this. He didn't always fit into the structure we know as school. But what I've always appreciated about people who supported him were those individuals around him who nurtured his talents, particularly with the written word. He's a, he's a wonderful writer. He's an amazingly talented visual artist. But most especially, he now has tapped that in to working in the film industry. And he's found great success in that. But his greatest outlet came when teachers allowed him to express himself through words, through music, and also through art. And I feel like as an adult, he's now able to realize the support that was provided to him through the many adults in his life. So I'm grateful to educators who continue to support the arts and most especially support kids who may think just a little bit differently about, about an item. When I was thinking about the diversity uh, topic that the uh, PTA selected for this year's work, um, and then I was looking at all of the um, portraits and the paintings and the artwork outside the photographs thought wow that's diversity in the making because each one has identified diversity in a different kind of way but if you looked closely at each one of them they they pull your heart into understanding that our kids get it our kids understand that the world is so different but they were all held together by a common belief in one another and belief in a hope in the future. So again, I, I wanna thank the students for their vision that they've brought to us. I also wanna thank the families, the teachers, the schools, and the district who support our students. In an era of diminishing economic resources for schools, it's absolutely critical that we continue to nurture the innovation that our students bring into the classroom naturally. And when I have traveled to other countries, those countries with whom we are um, usually compared, whether it's China or Finland or Singapore, other nations, people always ask me the same question. How do you get your kids to be great problem solvers? How do you nurture creativity? So the essence of the arts in our schools is absolutely so vital. So whether you're supporting programs in the school day or after school, on weekends, it's really, really important to nurture our children to grow up to be intuitive adults, people who understand the world at large and who are able to assume and understand the beauty of the world around us. I also want to thank the students who are here. I had an opportunity to speak with a couple of you. You're so proud of your work and you should be proud of your work. Your parents should thank you because of you, you they got you here. 
but it's because of you. Because you know what? People didn't invite them, they invited you. So just remember that. And hopefully they'll treat you to a little extra souvenir or to an extra ice cream or something before you leave. So I want to thank the students really for sharing a piece of your heart with us. It's not just your artwork, but you actually have shared a piece of your heart with us. And when I look at the artwork and I talk to each one of you, I have to tell you that as the Assistant Secretary of Education, you give me great hope for the future of our country. So anytime anyone writes a negative story about education or about any one of our kids, I'm hoping they have an opportunity to see artwork like this, but to have an opportunity to talk with our students too who are able to express themselves so, so well. Thank you for having me be a part of this. It's just a great honor for me. And I now would like to introduce the President, Betsy Landers. Good morning. It is my distinct honor to welcome you all to this very special day. And thank you, Assistant Secretary Delal. What a tremendous honor it is for National PTA Reflections to once again be back here at the Department of Education, where your mission is to promote student achievement in preparation for global competitiveness by fostering educational excellence and ensuring equal access to high quality education for all. So thank you for partnering with us and making today possible. We certainly know that the arts play a critical role in achieving that mission. The evidence is clear. An education that includes the arts helps students to develop critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and communication skills necessary to meet today's challenges. Not only do students perform better academically, Research shows that they often are more civic-minded and more likely to connect and communicate with others in a way that it clearly expresses their feelings. For more than 40 years, our Reflections program has encouraged students to draw upon their own experiences to explore themes like diversity means. Students choose their art medium, dance choreography, film production, visual arts, photography, literature, or musical composition. They then reflect on the theme and bring that theme to life in a way that expresses their personal feelings and is meaningful to them. The remarkable work that you will view today is just a sampling of the hundreds of thousands of student reflections entries that this program has ignited around the theme diversity means during the 2011-2012 academic year. What impact does this program have on our students? Well, you will hear more from the students that will be sh sharing with us today their unique talents. But I want to share with you something that one of our student artists recently shared with us. The comment was that reflections built her confidence. That boost of self-esteem is exactly what the Reflections program aims to deliver to our student artists. The National PTA Reflections program is the largest and longest running student recognition program for the arts. How do we do it? The program is made possible by PTA volunteers, parents, educators, grandparents, and other caregivers who volunteer in thousands of communities across this country and even in America's schools overseas. PTA is made up of thousands of passionate volunteers who spend countless hours supporting and encouraging our students to gather their reflections and make sure that every single student participant feels recognized. I am pleased to recognize many PTA volunteers who have traveled from across the country today to be with us. I am joined first by National PTA board member Ed Massey, who hasn't gotten here yet. So, but Ed is a member of the National PTA Board. He is also president of the National School Boards Association who is meeting here 
um, this week as well, and so he probably got a little tied up. Um, I also want to recognize the National PTA Reflections Committee Chair, Cindy Deering. And now take a minute to really recognize the heart and soul of this program. And I will ask that all of the local, council, state, and national PTA members and leaders please stand so that we can recognize your commitment and efforts to inspire so many children through our Reflections program and the other programs in national PTA. Would you please stand? Thank you. We are also grateful to a number of our student artists and their families who have traveled across the country. I've gotten the opportunity to meet a few of you, but we do want to take a moment to recognize you for being here and to applaud your talent. So with the artists and their families, please stand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to each of you artists for sharing your work with us today and for being a part of this exhibit. But to you parents, I want to take a minute to especially thank each and every one of you for the support you have given your children as they have explored their feelings and their talents through this program. It makes a world of difference. Thank you so much for what you have done for your children. We have invited two of our outstanding interpretation recipients to perform here today to represent the incredible talent of the Reflection Program participants from around the country. Our first audit, uh, artist will be Paula Moser, who is the 2012 Outstanding Interpretation winner for music composition. Polly is a student at Burley Manor Middle School in Elcott City, Maryland. And she is the daughter of Catherine Bledsoe and Thomas Moser. The title of Polly's composition is The Flow of Water. Polly, will you please join me? And Polly, before you uh, perform your piece for us, would you please share a little bit about what diversity means to you? My piece relates to the theme of diversity because all people are like water. While we are all so different from each other in culture, looks, and style, we are all the same at our core, just like water. Water can come from anywhere in the world, be it a mountain, stream, or a vast ocean. Water is always water, and nothing can ever change that. Just like we are all living, breathing people, no matter how we appear or how we think. My piece helps to illustrate that everyone is different and unique in their own way. But just like water, we are all flowing through the land and through life to the same place. And while all water flows to the magnificent ocean, we are all flowing through our life to the we are all flowing through life to our end when we may fondly depart this world. So what I'm really trying to say is diversity is as simple as the flow of water.
Polly, that was incredible. Thank you so much. Um, I know that your mom and dad are enormously proud, and we thank you for sharing your compositions with us today. Now we're going to hear from a gentleman that um, does so much on behalf of the arts, and that's Jonathan Katz. He is one of the primary champions for funding and support of the arts and other cultural activities across the United States. For more than 20 years, Jonathan has guided the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies as the Chief Executive Officer. Please help me welcome Jonathan Katz. Thank you, Betsy. Oh, that was uh, so wonderful. Uh, I'm delighted to celebrate the uh, Reflections Program with you on behalf of the 56 state and jurisdictional arts agencies of the United States. I salute the PTA for advocating arts education. And I want to tell you how pleased we are that Philip Horn, the executive director of the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts, links our network, um, our, our networks together by serving on the National PTA Board. Um, I'm going to follow the lead of today's theme and share my perspective on what diversity means. I believe that a sincere commitment to diversity commits us to ensuring that every child gets an education that includes the arts. Here's why. When we think of diversity, we tend to think of the various characteristics we share with other groups. We think of our gender, our race and ethnicity, where we live, where our family came from. We think of our age, our body type, our abilities and disabilities. Our diversity links us with some people and it separates us from others. We want to see those who look like us have every opportunity to succeed. And we want to see those uh, like us represented when decisions are made. And we want the, the option to celebrate with those like us uh, in private and in public. On the other hand, we don't want to be trapped by our diverse characteristics. We don't want to be stereotyped by those different from us, nor do we want to be limited by the expectation of those like us. At times, we want to separate ourselves from our inherited qualities, separate ourselves from our previous choices, and recreate ourselves. So I want to argue that essentially, diversity means individuality. As a poet in the schools for the Kansas Arts Commission, I learned that my young students could not distinguish between images they had seen on television a few days earlier and their own dreams. Without practicing their own imaginative language, without learning to tell stories in visual images, without learning to play an instrument, they were well on their way to becoming the spiritual captives of any picture on a screen, of any message delivered in music, of any image in a medium selling a product or an idea, without learning in and through the arts, a child's individuality is at risk. Learning the arts means learning how our senses work, how sound affects us, and how we come to understand and create visual art, how movement and drama and nature and the built environment and smells and tastes and artifacts of all kinds affect us, how our senses and feelings and ideas are influenced by culture, how our impulses and and responses are similar to that of others, how our feelings and ideas are strengthened or challenged by sensory experience, how we can express, communicate, celebrate, reflect on, criticize, and mold our individuality. Uh, Ernest Boyer, a former US Commission of Education, wrote, language is without question central to all learning. He said, language is defined broadly to include not just words, but also mathematics and the arts, three symbol systems that have their own unique characteristics and at the same time relate intimately to each other. The point Boyer made is that words, numbers, and sensory images are necessary for children to learn everything else. Some children's learning abilities and preferences will favor one of those symbol systems heavily Focus on two of those languages instead of three, and a large portion of your student body will have trouble learning any subject, trouble remaining in school. 
The rest of the student body will just not learn anything up to their potential. We must recognize that children are diverse in their abilities to learn. Limit arts learning to a single sense, push images and sensory exploration away from the central education of those who aspire to be scientists, technicians, engineers, and mathematicians. Um, I'm stuck here. And you condemn individuals to fail. And you condemn problems to last longer than they have to. There are more reasons why arts learning is essential to the practice of democracy. Creative writing, visual art, music, and especially drama all teach empathy. The arts help us understand perception. You learn that sometimes others perceive as you do, and sometimes you're in the minority. You learn that sometimes you just won't be understood. Through an arts experience, we can learn the importance of living where the minority is protected. We come to realize that all individuals, whatever majorities and minorities we inhabit at a given time, must work for the protection, that protection, or it will not exist when we need it. The Greeks had it right with their logo for drama, the masks of comedy and tragedy. When we put them on, we see through the eyes of another. Empathy is what drives civil liberties. It's what motivates people to perpetuate the kind of democracy we think of as American. And whatever benefits the arts provide, and reasonable people can disagree on those, it's better to have them than not to have them. As James Catterall has demonstrated in the long-term studies in his book, uh, Doing Well and Doing Good by Doing Art, arts learning is strongly connected with academic success, continuing education, and the successful employment of all students, including those challenged with low economic and socio, uh, socioeconomic status. Um, millions of kids whose parents are not well informed or affluent or maybe just got to this country or for one reason or another aren't that involved in their education don't get the arts. And they won't get them unless public schools offer them as part of their basic curriculum. And that's not fair. It's not democratic. We don't institutionalize inequities in the kind of democracy we want to have. Providing all children with learning in the arts, empowering all children to learn, is an essential part of democratic practice. Furthermore, we learn from Catterall studies that an arts-rich curriculum is linked to behavioral outcomes such as volunteerism, involvement in the community, and civic participation. Thomas Friedman, in his new book, That Used to Be Us, which is about what America has recently lost and could again regain, was asked, I think by Fareed Zachariah, um, whether his book has a happy ending. Yes, he said, but I don't know whether it's fiction or nonfiction. <laughs> what I have to add is my certainty that it will be fiction first if it is ever to be nonfiction. Every weapon we have invented, we have always used. The future must be different from the past. Not only our leaders, but all our citizens must receive an education that prepares them for profound acts of imagination. You who support the Reflections program, who understand how important arts learning is, um, you know that for students and for a society that respects their individuality, um, you are very important people. I thank you for the work you do. I thank you for the partnerships you foster between the PTA and state arts agencies. I thank you for challenging children, their educators, and their parents to consider deeply what diversity means. And I thank you for inviting me to join you here today. Thank you, Jonathan. We can certainly understand and share in your passion for turning STEM education into STEAM and recognizing the importance, the integral part that the arts play in a well-rounded education for our children. Because of your leadership, state arts programs are, have become and will continue in the future to be important partners to PTAs across this nation. And we thank you for all you have done to assist in that. We're now delighted to welcome another of our outstanding interpretation winners, this time in the category of dance choreography, Raquel Charles. Raquel is now a freshman in college and the daughter of Tawana Montgomery, who is joining her here today. 
And joining her on stage to perform for you is Tia Pasley, a former classmate of Raquel's at Sequoia High School in Canton, Georgia. Together, they will perform Raquel's award-winning choreography to the song, True Colors. Raquel and Tia. And before you begin, Raquel, I would ask that you share with us um, what diversity means to you. Thank you. In society, some people tend to lose the connection of what diversity truly is. Some would rather hide in shadows and conform to trends instead of projecting their own style. If it weren't for diversity, we would be living in an extremely dull world. Diversity is the colors of our society, the excitement of our day, and with diversity comes unity. In my choreography, I projected this vision with two characters that are well known in the world of a high school student. One character symbolizes popularity and the other insecurity. The overall message is to express the importance of standing tall and being proud of whom you really are. It is because of our differences that we come together and explore each other's styles and cultures. On another note, I'd like to thank my mother for coming out to support me and my best friend Tia for joining me in my piece. I'd also like to give thanks to my high school principal, Mr. Berman, and my dance coach from high school, Mr. Robinson as well as the National PTA for appreciating my craft and seeing what diversity truly means to me. This was such an amazing experience and I'd like to thank you all for watching my piece. of all thank you so so much for sharing uh, your talent with us today before we move to close out the ceremony um, I want to take just a personal moment of privilege and recognize a group of men and women who comprise the staff team at National PTA that made today possible for their long hours and hard work 
I would like you to join me in thanking them for all that they did to make today as special for our students' artists as they did. And I went totally off script so they can kill me later. <laughs> to close out our very special ceremony today, I'd like to welcome a very dear friend of mine, Cindy Deering, to the stage. Cindy has served as the Ref National PTA Reflections Committee Chair since 2009, and she continues to lead us with great inspiration. Cindy brings to this position not only the voice of a parent, but also that of a teacher, and one who truly has a great passion for arts education. Please help me welcome Cindy Deering. Thank you, Madam President. And I again would like to welcome everybody. I look forward to this event every year. We know that many studies show that children perform better in school and make better grades if they participate in the arts. We could also make the argument that the arts should and need to be integrated into core subjects such as math and science. Would children be more engaged and enthusiastic about learning? I think most of us in this room would say yes. Just as important, or perhaps more importantly, is the joy that the arts bring to our children. And I see this every day as a preschool teacher. There's something magical that happens to a child when he or she picks up a brush to paint at the easel. Maybe it's the wonder you see in their faces when they discover that when they mix the colors blue and red together that they get purple. And you also see that same magic in a child's face when she has composed a song and has sung it to the class and it's about her family. We also see that same joy on children's faces when they're acting out five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Five-year-olds can and do express themselves through the arts. This year, one of my preschoolers, Chung Yo, uh, painted with watercolor a beautiful rainbow. And I asked Chung Yo to tell me about his painting. And this is what he said. It's a rainbow because boys can like rainbows too. <laughs> Sometimes we see children express their fears in life through the arts, again through watercolor, a little girl, Emma, Emma C, I have two Emmas, um, told me, she said, it's a tornado, she said, but, and it's going everywhere, but everyone is safe. The arts are joyful and fun. One of my children comes in every day and she paints either through watercolor or tempera every day. So last week I was helping her put on her smock, you know, because paint gets a little messy sometimes. And I said, Charlotte, why do you like to paint? And she said, because it's fun. Mary Lou Anderson, founder of the Reflections Program, realized this. I have a quote from her that I would like to share. The cultural arts are happiness. Happiness is drawing, dancing, finger painting. Happiness is modeling with clay making music, or a poem. Mary Lou understood that the arts should be a part of every child's life. This year, I'm honored to support her legacy as, as chair of the National PTA Reflections Committee. This year, we're excited that we introduced a new division for the Reflections Program for special needs artists. Since then, I've talked with numerous parents across the country who are really excited about this additional opportunity for their children with special needs. Some children and their parents may choose to still um, submit their artwork in what we call our traditional reflections categories. This has always been an option for our special needs, honor, our special needs artists, but this year they will have an additional opportunity to be recognized. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every school supported the arts by offering the Reflections program? 
we can all be cheerleaders and advocates for the arts, just like Mary Lou Anderson. If your school's PTA does not offer a reflections program, I encourage you to step forward and ask why. Perhaps you're the person to lead a new program within your PTA. You, wouldn't, you won't regret it. Thank you again for being here and to our wonderful students and their families and our performers. Um, thank you for all you do to support the arts all across our country. And now let us welcome back Jackie Zimmerman, who will lead us through the ribbon cutting ceremony and the opening of the exhibit. Hi, folks. I was in the back of the room earlier. I'm Doug Herbert. I know many of you. For those who don't know me, I'm with the Office of Innovation and Improvement. And a little commercial plug here. It's the Office of Innovation and Improvement and the Office of Communications and Outreach that has sponsored this student art exhibit program for going on 10 years. And I'm really proud of it along with and proud to be a, a partner of Jackie's. And Sharice Ross, did we recognize her earlier? Sharice, make sure you meet her and thank her for her efforts here as well. Thank you uh, to the leadership, Cindy and uh, Betsy of the PTA. We really enjoy partnering with you, and it's great. As a former PTA member, my kids are all grown, but I was a member of the PTA, to have the leadership in the two of you and your wonderful staff, including Mary Pat and Eric from the national office. We're very pleased that you're in, your national office is here in Washington, D.C. as well. It makes it easier to collaborate. We have a tradition that we've developed over the almost 10 years, and that is to memorialize this by having our student artists come up here on stage and having our own artist photographer, Paul Wood, photograph them. So we have the artists come up first. Polly, Raquel, Tia, would you please come up? And all of the other artists who are here, whose works are in our gallery or on the, uh, in the writing, whatever you, your contributions were to reflections in your award, please come up on stage. Paul will direct you for a photograph. And if you parents can please get ready, and any school administrators from our schools that are being honored today, please come up in the second round of the photographs. We want to have the parents, the teachers, the administrators, and our special guests and leaders today, including our assistant secretary, come up and be a part of the second photograph. And I'm going to move this chair. Thanks, Doug. Um, all right. What we're going to do is over there. Come on up. Come, come on, up, come on come over there. Come yeah, up. right here, 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 front, here, here, here. center come stage. Up, come up. Come up. You're not far enough. Come up. Come up. Right here. That parents, could we have our parents and our speakers and special guests? Jonathan, please join us as well. Now, so guys, this is what it's like to be at a press conference in Washington with all the flashes going off and everything.
All right, now, if everybody could stay seated for just a moment, I want all of our young artists to make their way over to my right, to the open door over there where we have a red ribbon for you to cut. And as they're making their way over there, and their parents can certainly join them in support, we're going to cut the ribbon. What will happen in just a moment when they're assembled over there is we will ceremoniously cut the ribbon. For those who might like to take more photographs of the ribbon being cut, you could simply exit through the very back door and go around and take your pictures there. Let me mention, wonderfully um, offered to us by the PTA and their graciousness is a reception following the opening of the exhibit. So please come back in to the auditorium after you see some of the art. We'd like you please to not only see the reflections ex exhibit in the rotating gallery here to my right, but take advantage of the fact that we have scholastic award-winning work throughout the lobby of the building as part of our permanent student art exhibit program, and please peruse that as well. We have a guest book we'd love for you to sign to record your presence here with us. And during the reception, if you would like to see the Reflections winners in film and video, we will show those on a large screen here. We have them showing on a small TV monitor, but it doesn't do justice to them, so we will show the films, the Reflections film winners during the course of the reception in here. So I think we're ready for the ribbon cutting. Please join them either inside or outside. Enjoy the exhibit and enjoy your time here at the U.S. Department of Education and thank you for coming. Diversity means that no matter how different we all may be, we are all one.